the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies independently operated Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. The Hang Tree Affair. It was boredom that got Lee Ryan into it in the first place. His train out of Chicago for the West Coast was moving slow, with further delays expected because of the snowstorms ahead. Yes, he was bored and impatient. His last business venture in Chicago hadn't paid off too well, and he looked forward to his arrival in California and the prospects of a deal worthy of his talents. Lee decided that the club car might help pass the time. It did. The car was crowded, and he found himself sitting with a talkative man who seemed to know many things about many people, including a number of their fellow passengers. He was a reporter, a man whom Lee had known casually over a period of years, a reporter who apparently loved to report, and he talked to Lee confidentially as if to his city editor. Oh, you picked a great choo-choo, Lee. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm glad I'm getting off. You can carry on for me. How do you mean? Well, you can follow my boy, Jeff Larkin. There's no story there as far as my newspaper concerned. The city editor's washing it up. Larkin? That sounds familiar. Yeah, I bet he looks that way, too. Hey, uh, right over there with that girl. Oh, she's not bad. Huh? Oh, she just like all the rest. Hanging around him thinking he's going to get that money. Money? Oh, you didn't recognize him, eh? An ex-con. But I knew him when he was a big, big man. And who's Lee? Anybody's. Time had happened, he was the brains. Yeah. Well, that's what they say. He'd planned the robberies, and his partner, Noisy Nevins, pulled them off. Oh, a great team, great oh, team. Oh, Noisy Nevins, huh? The nitroglycerin artist. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Oh, Noisy could blow a safe door off, clean as a housewife, and open a can of peas. Oh, sure, and I'm with you. They used to work together. But the last big job they pulled, a $100,000 bank job. Larkin got careless. <laughs> he also got five years. Who got the 100000 Oh, it disappeared, and so did Nevins. That's why I've been tagging Larkin around ever since he walked out of that pen six months ago. Your paper figured he'd meet Nevins, split the dough. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Only my paper was wrong. Larkin knows from nothing where that dough is. And noisy? Oh, he's quiet now as they get. And permanent, too. Oh. Yeah, I got that way about a month ago. I think it was an auto accident out in Frisco. Ah, it was too bad. Nevins was probably the only guy in the world who knew where that money was. You figure he stashed it away somewhere? Right. Absolutely right. A hundred thousand dollars, and it stays stashed. Mm. Well, that poor girl wasting her time with Lark, and somebody should tell her. Yes, a hundred grand in unmarked bills. Negotiable as a mud puddle on a pogo stick. Uh-huh. <laughs> Say, you know what's a funny thing? Why, when I was a kid, I could never manage one of those things. Oh, no? No. Well, I was pretty good. Oh, you're kidding me, yeah. really? <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you, pal. Happy as scoops. Well, <laughs> don't worry about me. I'm getting off the next stop. My, uh, my best to Larkin if you should run into him. Yeah, I'll remember. And I just might run into him. Interesting, isn't it, Lee? A man with $100,000. Only he doesn't know where it is. It was hidden away by a partner who's dead now. All very interesting. 
Yes. And you think about it a lot after you leave your reporter friend in the club car. Wonder if he's right. If that girl really is going to be disappointed. It's hours later that you feel the train grind to a stop. Glance out of your compartment to see that you've pulled onto a siding at a small town station. A porter. And what's wrong? Why are we stopping? Hey, it won't be for long, sir. It's, it's just the snow. Oh, yes. Now, there's time to get off for a while if you want to. Some of the passengers are. We'll be here about an hour. Oh, thank you. I don't think I'll bother. Instead of leaving the train, you walk back to the observation platform. Stand there, looking off toward the few lights of the small, slumbering town of Springdale. You find yourself wondering about Jeff Larkin again and the girl. And then as the train is ready to move on, you see her, approaching alone from the direction of town. It's a chance to speak to her, isn't it, Lee? On impulse, you decide to take it. You start for the boarding platform at the end of the car and reach it as she comes up the steps. Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... It's all right. Oh, no, you've dropped your purse. Here. Please, never mind. I insist. You bend down quickly, begin to retrieve the articles that are spilled from her purse. One you can't help noticing. It's a picture postcard addressed to Mr. Jeff Larkin. General Delivery, Chicago. Give me that. Give it to me. Why, certainly, certainly. Here you are. Sorry, but I'm in a hurry. Thank you very much. Afraid your boyfriend might miss you? My boyfriend? I know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. I just thought you were kind of chummy with a fellow in the club car. You're mistaken. Someone happened to sit with me because the car was crowded. Oh, sure, sure. That's happened to me, too. Forget it. There's nothing to forget. Good night. Night. She wasn't very cooperative, was she, Lee? And you wonder why. Wonder also about the card addressed to Larkin. Why she got so excited about it. The next morning, following the stop at Denver, you find out. Yes, conductor? I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Ryan, but we've been questioning all the passengers. Questioning them? About what? Oh, I I'm sorry. This is Lieutenant Knowles, Denver Police. Lieutenant? To explain quickly, Mr. Ryan, a man a few compartments down from you has been murdered. On this train? No, happened at a place called Springdale. When we uh, pulled into a siding, Mr. Ryan. Oh, I remember. We, we stopped for about an hour. Yeah, that's the place. During that hour, the victim, a man named Jeff Larkin... Larkin? You know him? Oh, no, no. I, I've heard of him, that's all. Uh, I guess a lot of people have. Anyway, Larkin got off the train for some reason and never got back on. His body was found a short time later in an alley at the edge of town. He'd been shot. Poor devil. Yeah, uh, we've been trying to find someone who got off with him or talked to him just before. No luck so far. But now, the young lady in 29, Miss Clinton, says she spoke to Larkin earlier in the club car. But that's the last she saw of him. Oh, she, uh, she didn't get off at Springdale? No, no. She says she stayed in her compartment the whole time. I see. And you, Ryan? Well, I walked back to the observation car. I was there all... 20 minutes or so. But you didn't observe anything. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, Lieutenant. I didn't observe a thing. With the prologue of the Hang Tree Affair, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. Recently, I was looking at one of the newly announced 1949 cars. As the salesman pointed out the air conditioner and the front seat that drops back to make a bed, I couldn't help thinking it's the trend of really modern products to do more than is primarily expected of them. Just a signal premium compounded motor oil does so much more than just lubricate. Of course, signal premium has 100% pure paraffin base, the finest money can buy. But in addition, Signal Premium Oil contains scientific compounds that go to work inside your motor, doing jobs that regular oil alone can never do. One compound, for instance, washes out accumulated carbon gum and varnish. Another compound guards expensive bearings from corrosion. And still other compounds keep the oil from thinning and prevent excessive foaming. No wonder Signal Premium is the oil that guarantees a sweeter running motor. So next time you change oil, have your signal dealer put in the modern type signal oil that does so much more than just lubricate. 
Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil. And now back to the whistler. You don't have to wonder anymore about the girl you saw with Jeff Larkin. It all fits, doesn't it? The reporter's story about that $100,000 hidden away. Larkin's death in a deserted alley back in Springdale. The girl's claim that she didn't see Larkin leave the train. And that she herself didn't get off. You know different, don't you, Lee? And the knowledge gives you absolute confidence when you reach Los Angeles. Check into the same hotel that she does. And then half an hour later, call her room. Hello? Hello, Julie. Who is this? Oh, a friend of yours, a good friend. We, uh, met on the train. The train? I didn't meet anyone who I... Well, you met Jeff Larkin, Julie. You got real chummy. Like I once said. Oh. Well, are you still there, Julie? Yes. Well, stay there, huh? I'm coming down to your room so we can talk. Now, wait a minute. Now, you wait a minute, Julie. That's all it'll take me. Well, the name is Lee Ryan, and Julie... Yes? I like my martinis very dry. Well, don't expect too much, Mr. Ryan. I haven't any ice. (laughs) No, don't give me that so far. It's all you've had. Just, uh, use that cold shoulder of yours. I'll be right down. I, um, I don't do this for everybody, Mr. Ryan. I don't lie for everybody. Really, you're mistaken about that. Oh, is that so? Yeah, the drink looks good. I think yours looks better. Let's switch, shall we? Cagey. Suit me. Oh, it's good. Now, to the business at hand, Julie. (sighs) Sounds terribly boring. Oh, I'm not nearly as bored as I was when I started this trip. Things are beginning to look up. It's why I didn't tell that police detective that you got off that train... I couldn't resist a certain possibility. Namely? That you know something. Look, I, uh... I don't care about Larkin. But what were you after? What's that, uh... What's that address unknown, Julie? That spot where... Nevin stashed that hundred grand. Uh, hey, hey, I got it. What have you got, Mr. Ryan? The, uh, postcard, that picture on it. Someplace up north. Mother Lode Country, Silver City, wasn't it? You're talking thick, Mr. Ryan. Hey, what did you do? What did you put in this? In my drink? I'm getting dizzy. Julie! I had you figured perfectly smart, boy. You shouldn't have switched drinks with me. But you'll be all right. Mr. Ryan? Mr. Ryan, are you all right? Should I get the doctor? No, no, no doctor. I'm okay. Where is she? The young lady who called about you? She's gone, checked out. Gone where? She was going to catch a train, I believe. I'm, I'm not sure. She was just leaving her room when she saw you out here in the hall. Well, give me a plane schedule. I want to go to Silver City. Silver City? I don't believe the plane's landing. All right, they'll get me close enough. I'll go if I have to crawl the rest of the way. Yes, sir. Anything you say. It's as far as the stage goes, mister. Silver City. Here's your drink, mister. Thanks. Like I was saying, Silver City's real quiet during the day, but it'll open up round sundown. That's when the boys start drifting in from hang tree. It, oh, say, you was asking me about the stage. There she is, just pulled up in front of the hotel. Uh, you wouldn't be waiting for that little lady with the suitcase just got off, would you? I sure would, Pop. Yeah, <laughs> classy. Oh, here's your change. I gave you some silver in case you want to play the slot machine. Oh, there's no need to. I just hit the jackpot. A 
As you sit there at the bar, watch Julie enter the hotel across the street. You congratulate yourself, don't you, Lee? Your trip to Silver City paid off, with a bigger payoff yet to come. A quarter of an hour later, you see Julie leave the hotel. Watch her as she enters a cafe halfway down the block. Quickly, you leave the bar and hurry into the hotel. Say, clerk, I've been expecting someone, a young lady. She was supposed to arrive on the bus. Oh, Miss Creighton. Why, yes, yeah, she checked in a little while ago. Room eight. Oh, good. But she ain't in now. Oh. Oh, well, I'll see you later. Say, let me have your pass key, will you? I've left my key in my room. I'll bring it right back. Well, okay. Just a sec. I'll get it for you. Moments later, you slip into Julie's room. Quickly, you go through her suitcase and pocket the gun. Then as you turn, your eye catches sight of something on the dresser. It's the postcard. The same one Julie dropped on the train. The card addressed to the late Jeff Larkin. It boasts a picture of historic Hang Tree Cemetery of Silver City. On the back, you can barely make out the handwriting. Dear Jeff, be sure to look me up when you're out this way. Hope to see you soon. Johnny Burgess. Johnny Burgess? I gotta know more about him. Burgess? Yeah. Well, how do you like that? Your uh, friend was in here asking about him. My friend? Mm Mm-hmm. Lady got off the bus a little while ago. Uh. Asked me if Johnny Burgess had been in lately. (laughs) <laughs> you know something? Johnny Burgess died over 50 years ago. What? Mm, yeah. Silver Johnny, they called him. Big man. Another big man? Mm, yes, sir. Owned the mine. Town, too. Yes, sir. You uh, been out to the cemetery? The cemetery? Johnny's got the fancy and fanciest resting place of them all. Heard it cost over $10,000. Big granite crypt, got a life-size statue of Johnny on top, and... What's the matter, young fella? Oh, nothing, nothing, uh... Look, how do you get out there to the, the cemetery? Oh, easy. Just go right down the end of C Street here, then turn left by the Signal Oil Station, go up the road. You'll see a tree top of the hill. That's old Hang Tree. Right beyond it, other side of the hill, real handy likes the cemetery. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot. You're out of breath when you finally reach the old cemetery. As you start down the hill... You notice a handful of people moving about the tombstones. Tourists, Lee. Yes, they're all about you, peering at the time-worn inscriptions on the tombstones, taking snapshots. Then you notice someone else. Yes, there she is, standing before a massive vault, staring at the statue on top of it. Quite a gent, wasn't he, Julie? What? Don't look so surprised, baby. What are you doing here? I'm writing a book on the Old West. Now, what are you doing here? You, uh... You won't believe this. I'll try. I'm writing a book, too. About Johnny Burgess? That's right. Yeah, a remarkable character, Burgess. I understand that broken-down pile of rocks there, that crypt, costs ten grand. I must make a note of it. Doesn't look much like anything now, does it? Overrun with the weeds and all. That, uh, lock on the door doesn't look very good to me, does it to you? I'm not an expert on locks. You know, from here, it looks like it could be forced with a marshmallow. I wonder what's inside. That is, besides Johnny Burgess, I mean. I wouldn't have the faintest idea. Look, baby, our tourist friends are going to be parked here all afternoon, if I'm not mistaken, so why don't we go back to town, talk? About the romantic old West and all? No, no, about this. This postcard. And Johnny Burgess' crypt. Where'd you get that postcard? I happened to wander into your room. It was quite accidental, really. I was looking for the uh, elevator. May I have it, please? Well, sure, sure. Now, let's go back to town, find some place nice and private. Your room at the hotel will do. You know, Lee, you're a pretty smart boy. Oh, thanks, honey. It was really very simple. Nevin sent the card to Larkin to let him know where the dough was stashed. Hang Tree Cemetery. The hundred grand's hidden in that vault, the final resting place of Silver Johnny Burgess. <laughs> Give me a cigarette, will you? Help you, sir. Thank you. 
You been to Frisco? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a great town. We could have a wonderful time there, Julie. Could we? Yeah, besides, we'll be rolling in dough. Lee. Yeah. Just where do we stand? I mean about the... We're partners, honey. We're partners. I see. You'll have to give me a little time to think it over. Oh, sure. You know, there's one little thing I've been wondering about you, Julie. How'd you break into this affair? You're not Larkin's girlfriend. You picked him up on the train, didn't you? That's unkind. Oh. So you and Noisy Nevins used to hold hands. So we did. I met him in San Francisco while Larkin was in prison. You must have discovered that your boyfriend sent word to Larkin when he got out. About where the dough was, I mean. Something like that. But Nevins didn't tell you where it was. He was not very cooperative at times, Lee. Yeah? I bet you even suggested Nevins double-cross Larkin so that the two of you could have all the dough. Do you think? Yeah, I do. Well, Nevins wouldn't hear of it. He was one of those honest people, code of the underworld and all that. Funny, I thought he'd do anything I asked him. Except double-cross an old pal. Noisy seemed to think we could get along with half the money. Said he didn't deserve any more. Opening safes came so easy to him. Yeah, to him and his nitro. So when Evans was killed in that accident, you saw that half go out the window. You didn't know where it was hidden, but Larkin did. He'd get it all. So... Do we have to go into that part of it? No. No, I guess not. We'll forget about it. We'll forget about everything, except that in another half hour, it'll be dark. And then we have a date with Johnny Bridges. And a hundred thousand dollars. Now, we can be in Frisco by morning. What do you say? Oh, I don't know, Lee. I can talk you into it. I know. Can you? Well, I... Keep talking, Lee. I may buy. A half hour later, as you step out into the street, you suddenly discover that Silver City has come alive. The main street is swarming with men from the mine. As you walk past the saloons, the cafes, and stores, you can hear the shouts, the laughter, jukeboxes, and player pianos. You walk to the edge of town, stop, and stare at the hill beyond. Hang tree silhouetted against the sky. For a long while, you stand there, trying to make up your mind about Julie. After all, Lee, she killed once. At last you turn and hurry back along the crowded street. In one of the saloons, you get the information that you want. What's that again, mister? The bus! What time? Oh, yeah. Well, there's one due there in, uh, let me see, uh, about another half hour. Thanks. You can catch it over there. Yeah, right? I know. Now, say, is there a phone in here? Yeah, right back there, uh, end of the bar. Thanks. You push your way through the crowd to the rear of the saloon, to the telephone booth, and place your call. Hello? It's all set, baby. Still want to go to Frisco? Uh, of course I do. All right. But get the stuff and leave tonight. Now, you wait for me. Stay right where you are. I'll pick you up in about ten minutes. I'll be waiting, Lee. Sheriff's office. McQuinn speaking. Look, Sheriff, you can check on this later, but an ex-con named Larkin was murdered in Springdale five days ago. Wait a minute. Who is You'll it? find the murder gun at the Elmira Hotel in room eight. It's under a seat cushion, a chair by the window. You'll also find the dame there who pulled the trigger. Now, hold on here. Who is this? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Bye-bye, baby. I'm going to miss you in Frisco. <laughs> The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, since there are only five shopping days till Christmas, I have a brilliant last-minute idea. I hope there are no little boys listening, because what I want to suggest is that there is no finer present than a switch for that forgotten name on your gift list. 
The forgotten name I'm referring to is your car, and the switch I'm suggesting is a switch to signal. You know that signal gasoline must have something. For Signal to have grown so in popularity from a mere handful of stations in Southern California to almost 2,000 Signal dealers serving six Western states from Canada to Mexico. Of course, I don't have to tell you that Signal is famous as the go-farther gasoline. But even more important to you is the extra driving pleasure you enjoy, thanks to the extra efficiency today's Signal coaxes from your motor. So if you want your gas pedal to keep that Christmas morning thrill year-round, remember Marvin Miller's suggestion. Give your car a switch for Christmas. A switch to signal gasoline. And now back to the whistler. After 12 hours and several long-distance calls, Sheriff McQuinn of Silver City was prepared to do some questioning. He talked to Lieutenant Knowles in Denver and to the San Francisco police. Now at last, he felt that the puzzle was beginning to fit together. All that remained was to walk through the quiet early morning gloom to the cell occupied by his angry, impatient prisoner. It's about time you're talking to me. What's it all about? You can't hold me here like this. Now, just take it easy, lady. I can, and I'm doing it. But I haven't... Sit down. I've been making some phone calls. Picked up lots of things about you. What of it? In San Francisco, they tell me you used to run around with noisy Nevins. So? So, that's very interesting. Added to the gun you were carrying around, and it could spell a murder in Springdale. You'll have to prove that. Lieutenant Knowles thinks he can caliber of the gun, you know, ballistics, and then the motive, all that money. I don't know anything about it. Sure, sure, you don't know a thing. Why don't you ask Lee Ryan? We don't have to, lady. We're satisfied with what happened to him last night was Nevin's work. (laughs) Just like a hand from the grave, a double-crossing hand. What do you mean? Out at the cemetery... When your friend Ryan tried breaking into Silver Johnny's last resting place. (gasps) Yeah. Yeah, Noisy Nevins was an expert with TNT. He wasn't planning to share that dough with anybody. He set a booby trap to kill his old pal Larkin. But Ryan got it instead. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Frank Lovejoy and Doris Singleton. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Joel Malone and Adrian Jean Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.